there are people who are purists who say that there are no more cowboys, that the only cowboys were the people on the, the plains of the 1870s who were on the open ranges, and everything after that is sort of an adulteration of the word cowboy. <laughs> Real cowboy life is not as romantic as it seems in the films, although cowboys themselves romanticize their own existence and they have uh, myths and, and folklore and poetry about the work that they do. It's a hard job. I mean, it's, it's a tough, it's a physical job. When you're dealing with animals and you're dealing with livestock, you know, any, anything can happen at any time. Let him out the gate. I've had broken ankles, broken legs, knees, hips. I've got three screws and two plates in one knee. Offhand, I could come up with the four times that I broke my wrist. One time that I broke it, my, my wrist got tangled up in my rope when I, when I dallied. The other three times, horses fell with me. I broke my right hip before, and that was with a horse, horse falling on top of me. I had broke some ribs. I was just trying to get out of the way of a cow coming down to shoot. She turned around, and I'm every, every direction I stepped, she stepped too. And she finally had enough and ran over the top of me. And I'm just not the cat I used to be when I was younger. I mean, I'm not 25 anymore. I mean, I'm, you know, in my early 50s. I still, in my mind, I'm still doing things and can do things that I was doing when I was younger, but I just do a little bit smarter, maybe a little bit slower, a little bit wiser. You know, I've had enough, enough breaks and bumps and bruises to, to last a lifetime already. So far, so good. The ropers got better as we went on. It's hard to define what a cowboy is. In its purest form, it's easy. It's a guy on a horseback in the open range with straw in his mouth and singing to his cows. But today's day and age, it's hard to define. I am the oldest of four boys. We were given opportunity to become whatever we, you know, we, what we wanted to be. It was there, and that's what, what I did, and, and you know, it's become what I enjoyed. Get over. Get over. And if he wanted to be a cowboy, that was fine with me. And he is a cowboy, he's a good cowboy, and he's done it well, so I have no problems with that at all. My father's 77 years old, and you aren't gonna find very many 77-year-old men that still ride a horseback, that still can rope. Uh, you know, he, he is still very capable of doing many things. He runs the cattle, and I kinda handle the irrigating and the outside work, but he's the cowboy. There's C cowboys, there's B cowboys, and there's, you know, there's the A, the A team. And I always aspired to be on the A-team. Used to be $150 to, to fill up a tank, and now maybe $65 here. And that is kind of one of the brighter sides of, of the economy right now. You have the rodeo cowboy that ropes and rides and rides bulls, and then you have the cowboy that is a businessman marketing a product and you better be marketing the best product that you can that you can produce uh, if you're going to stay in the business I've got one I've got a, a steer for you I got to get him weaned though and I'm gathering tomorrow and so give me a week give me a week get him over the ball and get him on hay for you he's one of my older calves that I have there so I mean he's, he's old enough to go ahead and wean for me and he's gentle too so we'll get him delivered all right, hey, talk to you later. Bye. This is his first meal, literally. When he first came in, I mean, he was just sunk in. Your fingers could almost touch each other there. As he goes to nursing, he'll fill out a little bit more right now. And main thing is to keep him alive. He's got to have this to stay alive. Then we can work as he gets stronger and, and uh, his appetite starts picking up more. Then we'll teach him how to pick up that nipple on his own. Some calves are smarter than others and some of them just takes a little longer. To him, I'm his best friend right now. Let me 
to have a little more hay here for her. The biggest threat to ranching is being able to actually make a living. You're not going to get rich doing it. My rewards are enjoying what I'm doing. You know, I'm around animals, I'm around horses every day. When you think things are going to get slow and everything's going right, by the next day, something else will go wrong. Five out of the six cows really, a couple days before, had nothing wrong with them. That one's no good. That one's bad. Out of the blue, you know, we had some, some utter problems. There was a whole box of pursuit. Okay, I wanted the one that's in the today box. Okay, that's this one. Okay. So. There's some clumps in there. See, it keeps plug, plugging it up. Whatever. I hate you. Yeah, if I have a mouth open, I'd have a mouthful. <laughs> the only corral we have with a, with a squeeze chute that can hold them is over on the uh, south side of the property, so we'll have to go to one of the other corrals at least to gather them, but then load them and haul them over there, load them back up, haul them back after you've doctored them. And so it, it all is time consuming. Two little calves that have a little bit of the diarrhea this morning here, so. Hello? Yeah, there's two little calves here that, that have the have the scours pretty good. Okay, we better get over there. Give us 15 minutes. Come on over. Baby calves are just like little kids, and they can become sick, you know, catch cold, have pneumonia. Respiratory failure is the largest killer of, of cattle. Bring him around here, please. When he was born, he was trying and trying and trying and trying. After a while, they just kind of give up. Yeah. Come on back here. Right here. Come on, come on. No, it doesn't come quite as easy. You got to work at it. So usually the light starts coming on in his little brain a little more. Tails are wagging. He's a little lazy. He doesn't want to have to work at it. And she had to step forward there. <laughs> If it comes to the point where I give up, then I just load them both and send them to the sale, send them to the auction. When I was growing up, there was only like five to 600,000 people lived in the whole county. And the back country outside of, of San Diego, I mean, really was sparsely, sparsely populated. When you take in consideration Orange County, uh, you know, Riverside County, San Diego County, I mean, development is what has taken up the, the majority of the open spaces. To sustain a mother cow and calf, they call that an animal unit. And in the wet years, when it when it does rain, you know, it may only take 20 acres per year to run a cow and a calf unit. Means we've been in this drought over the last seven, eight years. I have a few places that uh, it takes almost 80 acres to run a, a cow and a calf unit. There just are not big enough properties around to run substantial numbers of cattle because it takes numbers, it takes volume to actually make a living. I mean, your overhead's gonna be the same whether you run 500 cows or, or 5,000 cows, roughly. So you might as well have as many numbers as you can. What helps us here on this, this operation is, is that we have reclaimed water that, that's irrigated here, and so we can run a lot more cattle per acre. Coyotes are a bit of a problem occasionally when, when they're just being born. But most of these cows are, uh, you know, they're pretty defensive about their calves and they, and they look after them pretty well. But it is, the dogs are my, my main nemesis. We're not talking wild dogs, we're talking dogs out of people's yards. Or people leave in the morning and go to work and the dog leaves to go run and play and, uh, and then pretty soon they get to biting and, you know, they can go to the point from 
har the harassment factor to eating the ears and tails off to actually taking them down and killing them. Shot him up that ramp. Willie, you know. let me help this. Yes. Today was payday. What we used to get for 10 head of calves, basically, it takes 15 head of calves now to get the same, same dollars. Cattle market's kind of following the stock market, and supply and demand. People are cutting down on you know their beef consumption. Just it's sign of the economy. This is him right here, laying on the ground, uh, right to our right here. We're following up on him, and uh, we left him in the corral, and he probably finally came around starting getting the idea and doing well on his, by the time he was probably five days old. He still remembers me. And a lot of times they don't stay quite this friendly. Until he's on the truck and the check is in my hand, that's where the success of the whole operation comes, comes together. The rewards aren't so many, but uh, it's, it's rather fun. My banker once told me I was unhirable, so it's a good thing that I had something I could do. So. <laughs> the thing I'm most proud of is the four generations. I am proud of, of my ancestors, and, and I'm sure as tough as things are right now, they were tough for them you know, back in, in their era also. There were, there were the ups and downs, there were the, the trials and tribulations of, of being in the business, and, and you know, for them to be able to stay in the business and, and make it work for them, you know, I'm as much as proud of them and their ability and their skill as horsemen and cattlemen. The part of the legacy is, that's going to be lost is, is our ability to how to manage ranches, how to manage property and take care of them where it benefits nature, it benefits the land itself. We made a living off the land, but we didn't abuse the land. And once we're gone, four generations of being the original environmentalist, that's gonna be lost forever in that aspect.